I'm so happy to see you here. Thanks for joining me for Friday. I'm Megan Enan. Uh, this is my weekly web series in which I talk about things like performing new music, music business, audience development, creative placemaking, and we are talking about staying calm. I don't know if I'm like a paragon of staying calm information, but <laughs> yes. So today in Friday, we're talking about staying calm during performances or staying calm during auditions. And we're keeping this short and sweet, like just trying to keep that Friday down, down to the minute. So the thing that I just want to talk about is as I, as I grew in my career earlier on, obviously performance anxiety was, was something that was more prevalent. And then the more that you perform, the more you learn how to deal with that. So, uh, and the more that you crave the feeling of performing, the more the anxiety takes a back seat because it's part of what you really would just love doing in the world. So, so that's kind of what I'm sharing in this setting is things that helped me curb anxiety was being accurately prepared for things. So being accurately, accurately prepared, surprise, surprise, helps you be less nervous. <laughs> So one of the things that we don't always know as we're training is what elements we're usually underprepared in for the performance. So sometimes we don't know how our body acts on higher levels of adrenaline. So we have to get used to that. Sometimes we, we have a tendency to forget words when we're feeling, uh, be feeling watched or something like that. <laughs> Look at me forgetting my own words. I'm in this setting. So, so I want you to think about what are the pitfalls or the things that I'm actually really nervous about. What are those things that are showing up as kind of recurring performance anxiety markers, things that, or things that I've experienced during performance that uh, I thought were negative experiences that I thought impeded my ability to communicate with an audience because by and large, there is probably a preparation element that is not fully there. And then you wanna just add those practice strategies as you're going. So if it's words, then perhaps you need more different types of practice strategies to deal with text, right? Or you need, uh, you maybe it's related to text, but it's actually a rhythm question. You consistently, miss this entrance, but then when you miss the entrance, then the words fly out of your brain. Whatever it is, there is something related to a practice strategy in there, and you want to just make sure that you're getting to the part where you feel really in control of the experience and the way that you're showing up. Do you feel like you are, you are creating the sounds that you want to create? Do you feel like you have access and and ability to do what you want in the moment. Are you able to have other thoughts occur to you while you're performing and implement at the same time because you know the material so well? That's the level that we're wanting to get to in performance where you can have another thought and it doesn't derail you because you know your material really well. So you're just kind of moving forward. I do wanna come back to one of the things that I was saying at the beginning of this is that also over time you, if, if you love performing, you crave performing, you crave the, the thing that happens there, which is communicating an emotion an experience, a, an ambiance, a, a story to, to your listeners. And if you stay connected to your goals during that, then things it's, it's hard to be shaken from what you're attempting to do, right? I want you to have that kind of goal focused, uh, outcome focused sense about what you're doing when you're performing. So you're going into it and it's not about external things that you have no control over. It's not about, oh, are they going to like, are they going to like me? Are they going to think that I'm good? Are they going to think that they want to, if it's an audition, are they going to want to hire me for their production? It's not about that. It's about going in with your goals in mind. I, it's my goal to perform this in such a way where I feel like I'm communicating a story. I am going to perform this with all of the musical artistry and phrasing and interpretation that I can possibly bring to this, right? Chunk it down, give yourself really manageable 
internal locus of control goals for performing so that you are in charge of whether or not that was a good experience or a less than successful experience, right? So when you're in charge of whether or not you can achieve the goal, then you can you can have a better understanding of like, well, was that a successful performance on my behalf? You're not only relinquishing control to a listener or to a panelist or adjudicator, et cetera. You're saying like, I was able to achieve my goals. If it also worked for them and they hire me and put me in their production, then that's great. But I, I did what I set out to do or I didn't do what I set out to do, that gives me information to head back into that practice room and figure out what I need to do to prepare better for next time. So divas, that's it. So it's about preparing accurately, preparing for the situation that you're going to be in, not your practice room situation, your performance situation. The way that you learn that is by performing a ton, a lot, a lot. <laughs> So get out there and perform as often as you possibly can. If that is virtual, if that's in person for two people, do not care, don't care, get out there and do it because you will only learn about yourself in performance settings by being in performance settings and by challenging yourself and doing different things and different spaces, different instrumentations, whatever it is, you got to put yourself in all of them so you know what you need to learn so that you can do better work in the practice room to to achieve your goals in the performance or in the audition. That's it. That's it. That's it. Happy Friday, divas. Stay sparkly inside and out.